Hey everyone, welcome again to another 360 Timmy. So slightly different today. I thought I'd do a bit of a walk and talk because I want to talk about what I do, which is project management. Um, I was talking to a friend over the weekend, Darren, um, about career options and um, I said I would talk about project management as a thing because I always kind of recommend it as a, a career choice. If uh, perhaps your current career isn't going the way you want it to go or you want a bit of a change, um, I found project management to be a very interesting way forward. Um, it's never a dull moment uh, and it's given me some great opportunities and exciting things to work on. So I thought I'd talk in today's session um, about my journey, um, how I fell into project management, uh, what I do um, and why I think it's a great thing. So to start off with, I've just arrived at North Greenwich. I'm uh, starting work today. Um, it's about 6.30 in the morning and for part of the day today, I'm going to pick up the phone and, and talk. So this will stop and start a little bit, but uh, hopefully you'll find it interesting. Uh, it's great because the weather's here again and uh, well, tell you what, let's get outside and see what it's like. Um, rather than me telling you, let's, uh, let's, have, a, let's have a look. Sun's up. Look at that. Sun's coming up there. And then, of course, I spin around. We've got the light shining on Canary Wharf over there. Right, let's get my bag. Um, I guess to start with, project management wasn't my first choice of career. I don't think I even knew what it was when I left school. And uh, as you've heard from other videos I've done in the last couple of months, my first job really was working in cinemas. So I uh, started as a projectionist, um, assistant manager, did that for a few years. I wanted to work in television, so I pursued a career that took me in that direction. That didn't quite work out initially. Um, and I became a video producer, uh, slash AV technician for the home office, working in the police training center. And then I developed on to become an IT manager and I pretty much gave up on having another career after that. I thought that was gonna be me, IT. And uh, for many years, that's all I pursued. Um, and I think I started to hear the word project manager in the early 2000s, um, whenever I, wanted to do any work, we wanted to spend any capital, you need to speak to the project manager. And I thought, oh, what's that all about then? And uh, basically it's someone that is responsible for the budget and getting things done. So a uh, bit of a strange concept, understanding what that was all about because I was used to taking things on and uh, managing things myself. Oops, just cross over. Up into North Greenwich Station. And as if by magic, I'm at West Ham. So, okay, let's talk about that first job. So, I obviously wanted to get into TV and uh, I didn't have many options. After a few interviews and not getting a job, um, but out of the blue came an opportunity to work at a police training centre. And it's basically where Police officers back in the day used to spend 15 weeks if you're in a particular force in the southeast and you go and train. It's like a police academy basically. And uh, the job I was offered by a friend was uh, a form of video producer, so uh, videoing training videos, that kind of stuff. So working at the police training centre gave me great opportunities to start working on video production. Uh, we're talking videotape days here and uh, the role was to support the police officers who were learned to be uh, police constables for forces in the southeast and it was a great place because we got to do a lot of practical things so there was lots of outdoor sets you'd call them or scenario uh, facilities on site like a, a pub a shop a courtroom a police station um, some houses 
and they'd reenact things like robberies and assaults, video them, and the police officers had to take notes and then look back at the video later on their progress. So quite often I'd be asked if I could film something and occasionally I would be asked could I get a balaclava and a fake sawn off shotgun and an old car from the prop store and stage an armed robbery during my lunchtime. So uh, it was kind of a pretty cool place to work from that point of view. And initially when I went there, I think there was about 20 computers and uh, it was in the corner and there was a thing called email but it basically just had what sandwiches were available in the canteen that day and a few um, police order things that used to come through but gradually the world of IT started to take over my role and I worked with a colleague who was head of the computer network he left and ended up giving up the video and the technical side to become an IT manager and uh, so I spent a few years doing that. By the time I finished at the police organisation I worked for, I was responsible for thousands of computers across the UK. And of course, that's when the concept of managing a large budget, resources and technology and benefits to business came in, which is very much themes of project management. So a company or an organisation will want to achieve something like, I don't know, a new reception area um, needs to be upgraded to, for the image of the company or you're going to have a new building, um, some classrooms or offices or you're going to install a brand new computer network, you're going to invest in some new desktops for your staff. So my role started to become a bit more focused on the national scene. So we had a series of police training centres across the UK. So if you were in a force in Manchester as an example, we had a police training centre in Bruges in Warrington. If you were a police officer in Wales or the West, you'd go to Cumbrana Police Training Centre in Wales. And the organisation I worked for merged together and all the IT for that um, became joined into one organisation. And one of my roles started to be to design new systems going forward, how we could share files and common platforms. Um, we did a lot of work on the student experience uh, access control systems, so you can tap your badge and open a door. We're talking um, late 90s, early 2000s here. This is not the things you kind of expect in offices now. It was all rather new at the time. So anything like that, um, we had a new ID badge system as an example. Um, we had a, whole, a system of digital signage across the, uh, the sites. We had new corporate things come in, so we upgraded reception areas and meeting spaces and I largely got involved with that but I still wasn't at this time what you would call now a project manager. I was basically a subject matter expert. I was okay. the one that was designing with my colleagues the systems that we were going to install. I would work on the procurement. I would work on the plan to get people to work across the UK and deploy it but I wasn't really doing the the pure project management kind of work that I do now. Now, I've been doing this job for about 18 years and I had some really exciting things I did. I worked on, and this was always with a team, I worked on a new forensic science college um, outside of Durham, which was really exciting. That was the first digital site that we had. Again, we're talking early 2000s, so we're talking about cameras, telephones, television, Again, practical areas for a forensic science college. It was purpose-built on an existing site that we had. That was tremendously exciting opportunity. I worked on a major disaster recovery exercise with central government, where we relocated a, a major piece of government or, or, or parliament to a remote site. Um, again, all really exciting work. But eventually, after about 18 years, I found myself repeating some of the work I'd been doing. It was getting a bit boring. And uh, redundancy opportunities were coming up quite regularly at that time. So in the Home Office, lots of departments became agencies and eventually they'd like to slim down their workforce. The police training uh, method changed from having regional police training centres to 
forces using the universities. So the site I worked at in Kent closed. I worked from home for a little bit, but eventually an opportunity came up to take redundancy and maybe take a new direction. So taking a redundancy option gave me some opportunities. So as part of those kind of packages, you're effectively put on what's called gardening leave for about two to three months. So you're staying working for the organization, but you know, you're not given much to do because you're winding down and you've got uh, things you need to hand over. But I took a couple of courses and one of them was the Prince II project management course. Now this kind of formalizes being a project manager. What basically happened is towards the end of my time in the police, the concept of a project manager had come into being. So when we were spending millions of pounds across a massive organization, it was publicly accountable. It was almost a, an agency or a public company. You had to have a bit more planning and organization, not just giving the IT manager the job of running the budget. So we had a series of project managers to basically take chunks of work, uh, budget and business benefit and deliver them as part of their role. And that was their job to manage business change. And that's what project management is effectively all about. Some of the key things you need to be a project manager it's common sense really, it's organisation, so imagine you're going to go out for a day with the family and you're going to go to London, you know you have to buy rail tickets, you're going to look up the times of where you're going, you're going to work out a schedule about how you're going to get the best day out, you're going to organise a family, tell them what they need to bring and during the day you're going to manage that journey around London project is no different to that. Um, it doesn't matter how small or big it is. The basic concept is you're managing time, cost and quality. It's a golden triangle of project management. Now there'll be others on here on YouTube who can talk about project management far more eloquently than I can but I discovered I liked planning things and towards the end of working in the police I found IT to be a bit annoying because suddenly you had to have qualifications that you spend thousands of pounds to achieve and lots of time exams and then next year those exams have expired and you have to re-qualify and I really wasn't up for a role like that. This has happened to many industries like plumbing electrics uh, you have to re-qualify at cost to you that's not something that used to be the case now I get it professional standards keeping up uh, standards of work that's recognized as part of a, an assessment process. Totally understand that, but uh, I think the burden on individuals now for things like that uh, is too great. So I really want to, wanted to walk away from being an active IT manager, you know, the supporting installing of servers and workstations. It became far too complex in my mind. I like to be a jack of all trades and the IT industry doesn't really want you to do that. It takes the kind of American approach where you have a focused area that you work on and you become an expert at that, that wasn't for me. So project management was certainly the route I wanted to take and I took advantage of this course that came up. Um, project managers I discovered were largely then getting the Prince II practitioner qualification. I had done some courses on that in the past but uh, this final month of my role in the police gave me an opportunity to spend a week away and do a foundation and a practitioner course. Uh, this would give me a recognized qualification. So when you apply for jobs and you say you're Prince II qualified, there is actually a website where you can validate that. So a lot of people say they've got the qualification when they haven't. Um, so I wanted to go out. Obviously you have to bear in mind at the time, I've been in the same job effectively for 18 years and I was leaving that organization and I was leaving a role to become a project manager and I needed some backing there to get in. I mean, I wasn't, I had no experience to say I'd run this project or run that project. All I could say really was that I'd done some project management as part of my IT role. And uh, lucky for me, project management was still picking up at that time in terms as, of it being a role. I think now in organizations, it's a well-recognized role that's uh, very much needed to deliver business change but back then it was still largely um, small and pockets of companies that had got project managers 
uh, now it's pretty much the norm. So I took the course, I passed the exam luckily, I had that qualification to be a Prince II practitioner and then came along an opportunity I couldn't turn down that involved throwing javelins and running around the track. So here at the Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park in Stratford, back in 2011, I started working on London 2012. And what an experience that was, but boy, has this place changed today. So armed with my Prince II qualification and my redundancy, I managed to get a job with a former supplier who had a gig with the Olympics. Um, the premise was they were subject matter experts in cable television, IP distribution, and we had a job to fit out all the venues of the Olympic Park. So the aquatic center behind me, the stadium just behind there, which is the uh, home of West Ham today, and all the venues on this Olympic Park in Stratford. Now, back in 2011, this was still a building site. In fact, most of these venues hadn't been completed. The job was they were being built as sports venues, but there was no cabling in there. So we had to put all the cabling and infrastructure in across this park, across the Olympic Village throughout 2011, leading up to the launch of the Olympic Games and the Paralympic Games in 2012. Quite an undertaking. The headline was 9,000 screens across the Olympic venues that we had to enable with our solution. So I really had to have those project management skills firmly in place. It was detailed planning. We had all kinds of restrictions. So to come to any of the venues on site, you had to go through a health and safety briefing. I had to have um, a CSCS card, I believe it was, a construction skill certificate card, yellow, to be able to go on site and to be able to supervise uh, specialist engineers because they were basically working on a live construction site. Um, it was about getting cable in place uh, in time for test events and making sure we were ready for a date that couldn't move. This was one of those big projects where the eyes of the world were on this particular venue. Now, I talked earlier about how you plan a day out in London as an example of project management. This was on an epic scale. So we had to work out how, we, how much budget we needed, how many venues we were touching, the resources we would need to install the equipment. And we had to think about if we were tied up installing at this Olympic Stadium behind me, which is quite a large venue, how could we get people working the other side of the site over there on the Olympic Village? So I'm here in what was Athletes Village, which is all the accommodation built for the athletes. Uh, again, another great legacy of London 2012 is that uh, all these blocks were designed with accommodation in mind, but afterwards they've been um, repurposed as flats. So in fact, they were designed as flats and converted to small bedrooms for the games and then very quickly turned back into flats afterwards. And now it's a thriving community called East Village. But at the same time, many Olympic venues outside of this area that we were covering, there was a, a, a shooting range at Woolwich Arsenal. There was various Olympic committees who had party houses across London who also wanted a solution. So we were going out visiting them at the same time. We had to overcome construction delays, which meant we could get on site, which pushed our timelines out. So it really was a super exciting and incredibly complex project. And of course, for me, probably the biggest project of my life. Um, and I don't think really anything will ever supersede working on the Olympics. Now it's important to say, and I say this with all my projects, it isn't me that delivered it, it's actually the team that I supervise. And that's very important because the word is project manager. So you are managing people, you are managing money, you are managing resources that work for your company, you're managing third party providers, and you have to get that all arranged. I mean, again, another analogy is if you're doing some home improvements at work, you have to get builders in to do some things. You might get electricians in to do other things. You might do a little bit of it. You might need to buy some paint or some furniture. And you've really got to piece this all together. And that's what I like about project management. You get an opportunity to take what the end goal is, the business benefit. So it's, we need to have 800 screens in the Olympic venue by this date. And you have to put together a plan of how you're gonna get there. You have to think about what could go wrong. So you think about all the risks and you have to manage all the budget as well. Uh, what a fantastic place 
to learn on, but uh, incredibly challenging at the time. So each of these venues had different building contractors working for them. So it was a fairly uniform process for the health and safety side of things, but you had very different levels of finish and uh, help on the venues. We did have the main contractor, uh, BT, as part of this, who we work with, and um, we built an incredible rapport. In fact, every year since, every four years, sorry, since the Olympic Games, we've come back to Stratford as a team and posed in front of the Olympic rings. A real legacy project and a rapport with a group of people from different backgrounds that I'll never forget. In fact, I have to say this permanent uh, reminder of the London 2012 Games stands at Stratford, very windy up here, uh, as a, a constant reminder of what happened here. And I think as long as I live, I will come back here occasionally and just remember those times. Because what you have to remember is London 2012 Everyone thought it was going to fail. There was lots of stuff in the press at the time about Britain not doing it very well and it would be, it would be a disaster. It ended up being one of the best games ever, I think. Uh, certainly the most memorable opening ceremony and nothing went wrong in terms of the technical stuff that we installed at the game. So a real memory in my mind of a fantastic time. Uh, and of course, I, I've just thought actually it's this year, it's Paris 2024. So we are due, the Olympic team are due to come back here um, in the summer to celebrate another Olympic Games. And just look at the architecture of this. This is the incredible legacy of the London 2012 Games that's still here today at the Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park. So eventually the final bell tolled on my time at the Olympics, like what I did there. Um, the Paralympics had ended. Uh, it was time to strip out all the work we had put in over two years to get the Olympics ready. Um, and what was left for me after the Olympics? I mean, the biggest project of my life, uh, relationships and friendships that I have never forgotten and we, we still keep in contact. But you know, really what was next for me. Now, as in terms of the company I was working for at the time, it was about the right time for me to move on. Now, this is where LinkedIn comes in. I've mentioned this in a previous episode, but I'd invested quite a bit of time in getting my profile set up on LinkedIn. And just by chance, when I was looking to move on, somebody reached out a recruiter about an IT project management job. It was only temporary at a local university just up the road for me in Kent. And I thought this was a tremendous opportunity. It was a project to install a new storage area network, which uh, for those of you not in the IT world, is basically like a cloud hard drive for a university where everyone saves, saves all their files. So a big infrastructure project. And I could take all the project management skills that I'd accumulated from working in IT in the police and my experience at the Olympics and go and work there. And it was really a fantastic time. It was very much for me taking a step back to when I was in the police um, in a much more IT disciplined environment. There was more software de development going on than I've been used to and a really passionate hardware team. Uh, again, <laughs> a feature of all my work, I think. I pick up great friends that I'm still in contact with today. And um, I really enjoyed the experience of working with a team because, you know, if I'm going to say many things about why you should be a project manager, if you like working with a team of different people all the time, it's a great opportunity because no one day is ever the same. And you get lots of trials and tribulations. We had all kinds of issues with that project for the university. Things didn't go quite according to plan sometimes. And uh, certainly in the early stages, when things were going wrong, you're thinking, oh, are we ever going to get to the end of this? But a friend of mine likened this to pushing it gently up the hill. And that's quite the way you look at it. You've got all this budget, time, and, and think, deadlines you've got to meet. And you've got to gently push it. You've got to overcome the issues. Really, when a crisis comes up, you can't panic. You just have to work out a way around it. You have to be imaginative in your approach. You have to think on your feet and you have to use your team because they'll help you. Um, now, one thing I found, of course, going from working in an IT environment where I was an IT manager, an architect, to being a project manager, I had to give up pretty much knowing the infrastructure end to end in finite detail. So I had to rely on a whole new generation of subject matter experts 
to help me. And that's the relationships you need to build in that particular environment. As I said, with any particular project, you always have to identify who the key people are that know the solution or the business that you're talking about, get them around the table, get them talking, and you chair the ideas take the actions and drive it forward. So I found myself at a bit of a crossroads after completing my contract at the university. Now I could have easily stayed on to be fair, but I delivered the project. What you have to remember at the time is that I've been since the age of 16 in pretty much part-time, full-time employment consistently through that. So for 10 years, I worked part-time and full-time in the cinema industry, overlapping my time at the home office, I've been there 18 years. I've done all kinds of stuff. I was an IT manager. I was an architect. I became more of a project manager as a result of the end of that process and left with those skills. Then I went contracting for the Olympics. So I was on a day rate, which is very good money. Um, obviously there's risks with that because the days you can't work, you don't get paid. Um, and of course, I could have gone contracting and not been very good as well. So you always have that little bit of a worry. But uh, nonetheless, I did survive the Olympics and it went off very, very well. That stood me in good stead for the university work, um, along with my IT background. But I started to think maybe my next opportunity should be back in contracting. So I actually had two opportunities. I had an opportunity to go back full time in government or I could go contracting for a large media organisation. So I applied for both and ironically, I got both. And uh, my logic was the opportunity with government required lots of security clearance and that would take some time. So I thought I would do the media company and see how that worked out. But I ended up working there and really loving the team. And that's, uh, as I mentioned before, key in project delivery. It's a team that's around you. And uh, there certainly is a great team where I work uh, now. Um, and as you can probably tell, what happened in the end is I ended up staying and uh, that big media company is still where I work today. So 10 years ago this year I found myself walking down this very street to start my first job working for a big media and technology company. Now this was going to be an interesting one for me because though I'd worked for a big organization in terms of the home office and I'd gone to work in the private sector for a a small SME, a, a, system, a small medium enterprise. I'd never really worked for a big media corporation before. And uh, I was a little bit concerned about how that would work out, but my fears were really unfounded because what I found was a tremendous supporting team of colleagues who directly work with me or around me. And I've never looked back really. I've really enjoyed the camaraderie of being a project manager a project leader um, in the technology and media space. And in fact, this building I'm in front of now uh, stands on the place where I started 10 years ago. So originally there was an old building called the Merce Building and the company I worked for had a couple of floors rented in here. And um, now it's been flattened and in, in the space of 10 years, BC now occupies this spot. So it's quite fascinating to see how things have changed over the years. So you certainly know that you've delivered a big project when one day on that building there, a massive advert for this new thing that you've been working in secret for is advertised as part of the launch. And that was quite an incredible day to see that. So I've come full circle. It's uh, seven o'clock in the evening. You've been traveling around with me um, before and after work, but not during work. I want to be quite clear about that. Um, and that's one of those things about project management. How do I film an episode today? And do my day job and uh, the answer was I'll film the sequences as I go into work and I'll film the sequences as I leave work and then tomorrow I'll edit it all together and hopefully it'll all make sense so we'll see how well that one works when you see this but of course I suppose I've talked about my journey and some of the some of that description I've talked about the benefits of project management but you know the start of today I was saying that my friend Darren had asked me about project management, I suggested it as a career. So we have to answer the question now. Given my journey, the key things that I've learned over the years is that sometimes your original career choice at school doesn't pan out the way you think it will. 
and you end up doing something completely different, which is what I ended up doing at the start. And then I've had several career changes ever since. So even though you qualify, do all the university, school, education, all that kind of stuff for a particular role, it doesn't mean you can't change in the future. And one of the aspects about project management is that I found I could reuse some of those skills that I'd learned earlier on. Um, presentation, working with budgets, planning, my knowledge of technology, organizing myself. They're all transferable skills for project management. And uh, that's why I'd really recommend it as a, as a maybe a career change thing to do because what I enjoy about it is, as I've mentioned earlier, it's the notion that I can take a particular problem or a, something that needs to be delivered, a benefit, and I enjoy the whole planning process of doing that. I'm um, just gonna get myself, so you see, this is why I'm doing it on the fly. I'm just gonna get my bag and put it away. Wait a second. And I'll carry on talking. Oh, uh, try not to knock the phone off at the same time. I'm gonna do one of those car talks now, which is gonna be cool, but obviously not driving. So, uh, here we go. Let's get this in. Oh, oh my feet. Okay. So, for, for the first time today, I can talk without other people listening on me. Um, so where was I? Yes, the, the excitement of taking something, planning, and the enjoyment of delivering that and going through all the challenges of getting there. You remember the analogy I made at the start of arranging a trip to London for your family? When you come back from that trip and it's been really successful, how cool is that? And that's how I think about projects. Now, you could think, well, that's rather dull, Tim. You know, you're project managing a database for a university or a school, that can't be that interesting. But no, it's not. It's the, if you, if you put it that way, but it's the challenge you take on. I mean, I, I have always been very lucky that every job I've had, I've enjoyed. I've worked in retail, but I haven't covered some of that. I uh, worked in the wine merchants. I was a car cleaner for a while, a part-time job. Um, I worked part-time in Blockbuster Video back in the early 2000s. So I worked in retail from that point of view as a kind of a second job. I've worked in government. I've worked in the public sector, the emergency sector. I've worked now in a big corporation in the media. And when I was working for um, the systems integrator during the Olympics, I worked with different types of business as well. I worked with banking. Uh, I worked with property management, uh, builders, uh, all kinds of industries. And I've found every single one of those aspects Great. I mean, when I was doing the Olympics um, and some building projects, they're notoriously difficult. They never go according to plan. Construction is uh, all about planning. The trouble is that people that put the buildings up always want to make last minute changes. And it's like it's like turning an oil tanker. You have to turn the wheel and it turns three miles down the down the seaway. And that's what big construction projects are like. So that's why they're late. I mean, you can see just behind me the Millennium Dome, as it was called, built for the Millennium events uh, in the year 2000. And now it's a successful tourist venue, but there was, you know, all kinds of issues with construction there. And again, that's one of those things that had to be ready at the right time. And there was also a bit of a debate about what it would be afterwards. And, and look, at, look at it now. I mean, this is one thing we're actually very good at in this country is, is putting something like that up and repurposing it afterwards. So that's the I'm, I'm, I'm rambling again, aren't I? But that's where I, I, I really enjoy the challenge of, of projects. And uh, I guess the danger for me is that I've delivered quite a few big projects. I've had some really great wins uh, from that and some great enjoyment. And I I obviously now think, well, what, where's my challenge now? Now, uh, it remains. I'm, a, I'm a, As I've mentioned, I'm a head of department. I'm responsible for a whole domain in the company I work for. I do very much enjoy that. But, you know, this is why really in my part time now I do content creation because I want to push myself even further. I want to create content that people want to watch. Uh, I haven't quite got there yet. Um, some of you are watching. That's great. Um, but I want to keep pushing more and more content out. What's been great about this episode is I've got outside of the house for the first time. I actually start feeling like I could get back to recording outdoors with the 360 camera. So that's great news. So if you uh, ever think about a change of career, um, well, you know, this can happen in any industry. I mean, you can be working in the sports. You might want to work in media later in life. You could be a builder and you might want to be a sports coach. I mean, there's nothing wrong with changing career. In fact, I found that makes life incredibly interesting and you meet all kinds of different people. So don't focus your career on one particular avenue. Maybe open your eyes up to other, other ways of doing it. And as I mentioned, project management was always following me around. 
in all the companies I worked in before. I did meet very early versions of project managers in my previous roles, and um, now I know how difficult it is for some of them. And I work with a lot of project managers now um, of varying backgrounds and lots of complexity. They're all great people. Um, we have a great laugh. Um, I guess we're under a lot of stress, and so we enjoy each other's company when we socialize and we share ideas and you know teamwork is one of my other things it's not I'm, I'm certainly not a person that locks myself away I like working with people I enjoy working with people I enjoy seeing them thrive I enjoy encouraging them um, I don't have a problem being challenging when I need to be um, so if you're thinking about being a project manager that's that's the thing you have to remember it has got the word manager in the title so you are managing people and they can be difficult sometimes. You are managing difficult customers who have demands and needs and they can fly off the handle one minute or they can be very congratulatory the next. Um, you you have a lot of, euph of euphoria as well because, of course, when you launch big projects, um, one of the projects I mentioned earlier, um, the big glass TV, uh, we launched it here. Hello and welcome everyone. I'm thrilled to be here with you today and joined online by so many of you across Europe and the world. I've watched and admired Sky for decades step into the future of entertainment and say hello to the magic of Sky Glass just down the road from the O2 in a massive arena. It was a massive press event. And um, that was a fantastic experience. And that, you know, we, we were part, my team uh, was part of a, a much bigger team that put that all together. And um, I don't think any of us will forget delivering that because it was during uh, COVID time as well, which was qu quite unique. We were locked at home and we had to deliver something uh, very complex. So there's my takeaways. Now, I'd also like to thank you all for watching. Um, we've just clicked over to 2,000 subscribers, which is amazing. Uh, I haven't done that quite as quickly as other YouTubers, but that's still a good thing. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm of a certain age. I, I've got boring topics. Maybe not everyone wants to watch my stuff, but, you know, I'm trying to make it interesting. I really do appreciate when you uh, comment and when you suggest things. I will take any feedback on. Uh, I'll give anything a go. So, yeah, feel free to take part in the community or the comments of uh, this video. As usual, please do reach out to me at 360timmy.com uh, on any social media platform, uh, but particularly YouTube. Comments are great. It helps the channel. You know, give it a thumbs up. Um, subscribe. Um, that's all welcome. And uh, it leaves me with one thing to say. You have a super day. <laughs>